Hi guys and welcome to episode 5 of the 4 Lads podcast. I'm here at iBooks with Stevie following Rangers. Very dramatic, we'll say 2-1 League 1 over Hearts. Today's attendance was 49,530. Stevie, where do you even begin to talk about that game? I started typing out notes for a 1-0 league defeat and in typical Rangers fashion, you were in tears in the gantry. What, <laughs> what happened? Um, not quite, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's difficult to put into words because we had all think, resigned ourselves, even the stadium had resigned ourselves very flat, Sarah. Yeah. Very flat. I'd written out notes in the blog, 65 minutes, there's nothing happening here, it doesn't look likely. It's flat performance, the, 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 the crowd was flat and it just never seemed likely. And then we get a nothing corner, it swings to the back post, Connor Goldson gets up and is remonstrating, I've been fouled, I've been fouled, it goes out and then we're stopping, then it goes to the bar. And as soon as he goes to the monitor, you know it's coming. And at that point, you know, Tavernier steps up and it, it's more of a relief that he's put it in, given the fact that he's already missed one. But the ball's on him to get up and take it. Well done to him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then, then Ibrox changes. We all know it changes. The board goes up for nine minutes. There's a roar. Everybody gets yeah. behind it. And within two minutes, Tav breaks away, picks up a ball and he swings in just an absolute lovely cross. Danilo pulls off brilliantly and downward heads at home and Ibrox erupts. And the good thing about that is James Tavernier had a horrible 90 minutes, Sarah. Oh, undoubtedly. He was poor. He yep. wasn't the only one, and we'll come to it, yep. but then produces massive moments. The ball's on him. And, you know, he would have got it in the neck. We all would have been sitting here going, Captain misses penalty, horrible performance. And then he produces an assist yep. and a goal and he gets Rangers out of a hole again. Yep. And his, the quality of the cross was incredible. And all of a sudden, Ibrox has went from, you know, potentially, like you said, we're all sitting in gantry writing out our notes and getting ready to get tore into them. And then all of a sudden it's 2-1 and, and Rangers are, are closing that gap and, and you're going away on a Sunday night overjoyed. But it does, the result is flattering. It papers over the cracks. We'll take it. Listen, I'm delighted. We're both yeah. delighted. I think that's absolutely yep. fair. But let's be honest, the performance was not good. Oh, I don't think anyone's sitting here, you know, ecstatic that for the 90 minutes that we've just watched, but um, you can't you can be anything but pleased leaving Ibrox after that. But oh, delighted, but relieved. I think relief. Uh, is that yeah, fair? Is that uh, how you yeah, feel? Yeah, probably. Did anyone stand out for you today? John Lundstrom, obviously man of the match. You've spoken about him just uh, a couple of minutes ago as well, um, about him being the sort of like the cog in the middle of the park. He was always picking the ball up, trying to drive forward. See, other than that, you're, I'm really struggling to pick out anybody who was eye-catching yeah I would agree I think it's difficult you know Danilo gets your credit to him because he's, he's finished really we'll well <laughs> and we'll, we'll come on to what he said and stuff like that but Lundstrom you know Lundstrom frustrates me at times because he is the spare man I sometimes think he shifts it too slowly does he take an extra touch mm-hmm. but he would stand out above and beyond anything else we had mm-hmm. today but I think that speaks more for the volume of our overall performance yeah. than just him I thought Seema tried, never really worked. There was times where he stood in the ball and stuff, but I thought he kept going. Aside of that, no. Unfortunately for us, we're sitting and we're probably saying that the performances of some of the big signings in the summer and that was worrying, and that's more of a kind of come away than you're saying who really, really played well. And we'd that's be- that's that's the disappointment. Yeah, we'd be as well just saying it, so... I was obviously on here last week raving about Dessels get, finally getting his goal. We're willing him to do well. But having just watched his performance in Prague on Thursday night and then again um, here today, when does that? When do we call a close on that experiment? Because it's it's not working. And I have to say the same for Sam Lammers. I don't know what type of player he is. He's not a winger. He's not a 10. I don't know where he fits into that team. And I have to say, Todd Cantwell and Tom Lawrence both start in that position ahead of him and that's it. Yeah, I think, look, I think they're very problematic. The really big problem is, Sarah, as you said, how many chances do you give them before you realise? But I think, look, I've, I've got a little bit of... What's the word I'm looking for? I feel for the manager in that because our squad's not big enough mm-hmm. and he's got so many injuries that he's having to try and persist and he also has to try and get something out of them as well. So he's got to play them, he's got to try and get something. But like you say, 
the difference between Danilo coming on on Thursday night was night and day. Mm-hmm. The difference between Danilo coming on today, again, miles away. And just, the big man, it just doesn't, sometimes players just don't suit Scottish football. Yeah. And I don't think he suits Scottish football. And then there's Sam Lammers. And I said during the week that Sam Lammers was more of an issue to me than Dessers because I think Dessers is trying. I think he's putting himself about. I think he's trying. It's not coming off. I don't see what Sam Lammers is doing. He, it's almost like it's a half jog. It's almost like it's a half effort. He'll dip his toe. Remember the one in the first half where, where he, he didn't go for the 50-50 and then he gave away a stupid foul? Yeah. And I said to you that that's more of a problem to me than than losing a 50-50 than just petulantly giving away a silly free kick. They're big issues for Rangers. Yeah. And, and it's no word of a lie to say what an improvement when young Ross McCausland came on and Scott Wright came on and they didn't do anything overly massive. Two of your favourite men. Yes, indeed. <laughs> they didn't do anything overly massive, but the difference in the position of the squad and the kind of what they're able to produce it was much more than what we were getting out of them. something as small as picking the ball up and driving at a defender and being a little bit more direct and playing the width. Yes. See when a team is sitting in a, in a low block that, let's be honest, Hearts did for the majority of the game. They sat and they defended, they defended very well. I don't think there's any dispute in that, but we we can't play through the middle of that. We need to move off the ball, pull their players out of positions, and you do that with wingers. I, yeah. think, I think that's the way forward. But, um, I agree, you know, and I think the manager maybe thinks that as well, but this yeah. squad... For some reason, the position we've managed to get ourselves in, we don't have that. Yeah. So even I don't think Seema. I think Seema's doing a really good job for the team. He thought he was fabulous on Thursday night. Mm. All credit to him playing a left wing back yeah, role yeah. for a young striker, basically. Oh, absolutely. And I think today again he's doing well. I I think in reality he'd maybe be much more potent through the middle up front with the Nilo maybe, but we can't do it because we're not the personnel. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about players as well that are maybe not suited to um, Scottish football. Ridvan Yilmaz was badly caught out with their first attack for the Shankland goal. Um, it was a brilliantly taken goal by Lord Shankland, who's who's one of the most clinical strikers in the league. Um, but he peels off the back at the wee man as if he's not even there. That's a problem for us going forward this season. Teams are going to target him purely because of his height. Now, I'm not disputing that he's technically a very good footballer. Um, I'm, I'm just, I've still got reservations. Yeah, look, I think that's fair because it's a very, very big point, isn't it? I mean, Shankland movement was excellent for the goal, but he does get away too quickly and then he's completely unchallenged as well. And Red Van loses the flight of the ball and all sorts. He doesn't even try and put him off because he's completely lost. I think Red Van's okay going forward. He doesn't have a delivery like Barisic, but I think he's more technically good with kind of his positioning and how he progresses forward. Mm. If you could somehow merge both of them, that would be ideal, but you can't. <laughs> so that's that's a kind of disappointing thing. But yeah. it's just, you know what, I don't, I don't think in the long run these guys will, will really be where the manager wants to be either. So it's, there's, there's a lot of surgery to be done with this squad. And I think the more that, that the games like this happen, the more like games like this on Thursday night happen, I think it's good for the manager to see because this is all things we've sat here and commented on mm-hmm. and, and brought up. And sometimes when a new manager comes in, you can get that uplift that perhaps hides the mm-hmm. things that we are saying. But he's now seen in the space of two 90 minutes. Now, let's let's be honest, Prague was good for 20 minutes. The rest of it was a bit of a horror show. Yeah. Today was not good for 90 minutes, Sarah. Let's, you, we've got out of jail today massively. It's not good for 90 minutes, but he's seen it. And he's seen the issues firsthand. And I think that that, in the long run, could be helpful for us. It's something that he obviously spoke about in his uh, his post match interview there. That this is still he calls it an observation period. Um, he's happy with the reaction, but you know, the, obviously there's still kind of massive improvements. Was it perfect? No. It was something a, di- a, a you know a direct quote from him? But what he's saying is, if that team, if they keep going for ninety minutes. That's what can happen. You saw the lift that it gave the players after the penalty. You saw the lift that it gave the stadium. Again, he was talking about the support being loud and getting behind the team and all that sort of thing. That will all click. But all we're, I suppose, all we're really looking for is maybe, maybe a little bit more effort. But I think the managers, yeah, will, would, you know, can see the problems. I would agree with you as well. I think that. It is, look, he wants the spirit, he wants to try and harness that and, and get that kind of reaction because more often than not, if you get that 
then they're going to be able to drag you through it. And we are going to have difficult moments, and that's what he was looking. So he got that big reaction. Yeah. And you get that from, look, again, I'm going to say it, you get it from Tav. And I was, how many times did I criticise his ball today, his crossing, hits the first man, his delivery, everything? How many times did he overshoot it? We he all, spoke about him specifically. Yeah, he did say it specifically. But said his it's, mentality is he wants more of that in the yeah. dressing room for a player to have missed a penalty. And let's be honest, he was howling, right? Missed a penalty at the yep. end of the first half to then have the boys to step up and take a second one and then the one good cross that he fired in gets you your winning goal. Yep. Fair play to him. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I've said a lot about James Tavernier this year and I still think that there are valid criticisms mm-hmm. and question marks, but that today was unreal, so he deserves all the credit yeah. for that. To have the balls, I'll say it again, mm-hmm. to produce that Ibrox when Ibrox is grumbling and Ibrox is difficult, like it was, to get up and take the penalty, but then to drive up. And remember, he's driving on, he's driving on 30, 40 yards and then swinging that cross in. Inch perfect cross. Mm-hmm. And when he hit that cross, we all moved. Like it, it was one of those ones where as soon as he hit it, that's got a chance. Yeah. And that's got a chance. And then you see Danilo moving off. It's a, it's a wonderful moment. And um, listen, we've got a jail today. It needs to be a lot better. But this has been a good weekend for us. Yeah. It's actually been a very good week since the manager came in. And we don't want to... We all know, look, we're not going to sugarcoat it, right? And we all know where we are. But I'm happy with that. A word on Danilo? Still handsome. Oh. As Tell as us about the press conference. Who was it? Somebody asked him if he was going to continue wearing his, his, his mask. mask yeah. I think he spoke about it. He's seen a he's basically seen a sports psychologist at the moment to allow him to sort of overcome, you know, maybe battling duels and things like that. Obviously, it was yeah. a facial injury, so you can understand that. We know a lot of top professionals use sports psychologists, so there's nothing um, really to read into there. But when he was asked would he continue um, to wear the mask. And he made a, a, a sort of flippant comment about still being handsome. And yeah, he says it's place. okay, I'm still handsome. <laughs> ah, it, was, so. uh, it was very good. But it, he, he does look like he's going to be a player for us. And I think probably will be our starting number nine when he's 100% fit. Agreed. And we've all said that we can see something there. Aye. And I think we do see something there. He's, he's not perfect, mm. right? He's not been perfect. He can finish, though. And the evidence to support that he scored a couple of wonderful headers is there. So I've got hopes. For yep. him, Sarah, I really do. Um, and it was a lovely moment today. His header was actually brilliant. Downwards, corner, t- at the, the pace of the, he just had to direct it and he done everything perfectly. Mm-hmm. Really good finish. Delighted for him. He, as soon as he's fit, will come in this team. Yeah. And it's up to us to give him service like that today because if we do, I've got a feeling he'll score goals. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. So. What about you today? We've commented a lot on the game and stuff like that, but what was your overall kind of take on that? Because I've spoke a lot, but let's find it back Honestly, to you. pretty drab. I am concerned. I'm obviously we play Hearts next Saturday. We've got a, a, a kind of dodgy trip away to, to Dens Park on Wednesday night as well. Which, and I know we'll say, it's Dundee, it should, be, it should be an easy three points. We've got a lot of injuries, there's a lot of games. You know, at the moment, you're looking, it's fatigue an issue. You know, Campbell coming off again today, probably still not 100% fitness levels there. We obviously get news earlier on that Tom Lawrence is going to be back training. Is it possible? It's going to be too soon for him, realistically, for next Saturday. Um, I am concerned overall about our squad, but being able to, to still go and to still drive at 90, 90 plus minutes just gives me a wee, a wee glimmer of hope that I'll always be positive, right? I know I came in today going, they dropped points yesterday and I bet you we dropped points today. It's just fucking typical Rangers, isn't it? You just know it's going to happen. But in my heart of hearts, I always, I always think we can beat anybody at Ibrox. I would just love today to be a catalyst for something. I know. To get the squad to go in there and say, right, we've got out of jail, but let's pick ourselves up and we've cut the gap. Next game, Concentrate on that, get the win. They should be in that and dressing go room going, see that Hearts team? Let's do them at Hamden and go and, re- go and lift that League Cup. Yeah. That's what yeah, I want. Absolutely. But we got the win and we move on. Absolutely. So until next time. Until next time, take care. Thanks for listening.